<laughs> wow, this is breaking news. Only seven hours ago. Plastic pollution. Stop flushing contacts down the loo. This is brought to us by the BBC News. Sure. Researchers in the U.S. have been investigating the final journeys taken by disposable contact lenses. They found 15 to 20 percent of U.S. users simply flick these fiddly lenses down the drain via the bathroom sink or the toilet. The Arizona State University suggests that much of the plastic material then ends up in the waste treatment plants. I have something in my eye. <laughs> it's pissing me off. <laughs> Sorry, I I just I couldn't help myself. <sighs> the lenses are consequently spread on farmland and sewage sludge, increasing plastic pollution in the environment. Around 45 million people wear contacts in the U.S., while rates in other countries vary between 5 and 15 percent of the population in Europe using them. Over the last decade, the use of softer plastic lenses have grown rapidly, with people using daily, weekly, or monthly disposable in greater numbers than ever before. Men don't wear passes when you throw your contact lenses where you sit your asses. <sighs> the new study suggests that U.S. at least around 14 billion lenses are thrown away, amounting to around 200,000 kilograms 441,000 pounds of plastic waste every year. <laughs> the authors of the study surveyed wares in the U.S. found that about 15 to 20 percent of them flick their lenses down the sinks and toilets, meaning they will most likely end up in the wastewater treatment plants. I, 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 I put never mind. <clears throat> Much of the waste material ends up as a digested sludge, which is often spread on farmland. The authors estimate that around uh, thirteen thousand kilograms of contact plastic lenses end up de deposited this way. They persist during water treatment. They become part of the sewage sludge. Professor Rolf Helden and the Center for Environmental Health Engineering at Arizona State told the BBC News. We know that whatever's in the sludge can make its way into runoff from heavy rains back into the surface water and then a conduit to the oceans. There is the potential of these lenses being taken on quite a journey. I'm sorry, I just I have this vision of somewhere Aquaman going, Oh, I can see so much better, no more fish eye. The researchers are concerned that this poses as an ecological risk and may follow the accumulation of persistent toxic pollutants in our vulnerable organisms such as worms and birds. If earthworms consume the soil and birds feed on it, they could see that there are plastic and the same journey is done by plastic debris in the ocean. They are incorporated 
by that and also in part of the food chain, said Professor Halden. Contact lenses are often a mixture of acrylic glass, silicones, and fluopolymers. Sure. And allows manufacturers to create soft plastic material, which permits oxygen to pass through the eye. To work the impact of waste plants, these materials, the researchers exposed five polymers and contact lenses to microorganisms commonly found in these treatment facilities. Oh, girl got a rough finger. She need lotion instead of throwing that in the ocean. <sighs> We found that there are noticeable changes in the bonds of the contact lenses after long treatment in the plant's microbes, said Varner Kilker. Note to self, try and find news articles with names you can actually pronounce. <sighs> when the plastic loses some of its structural strength that will break down physically, this leads to smaller plastic particles which will ultimately lead the formation of microplastics. Okay, and you can read the rest of this for yourself. Uh, and now for your dose of history, here's Action Gal with some Black Death. An introduction to the Black Death close by Shahan Chion. For the Australia Times Magazine. Link in description. SARS, AIDS, HIV, the 1918 pandemic of Spanish flu, the 1790s pandemic of yellow fever in the United States. Each of these has killed hundreds, possibly thousands, in some cases millions of lives. And yet despite this, none of these pandemic diseases has ever come close to the fame and infamy of mankind's oldest and most destructive disease, the Black Death. I'm pretty sure that if you stopped any person in the street and asked them what the Black Death was, they would be able to tell you at least something about it. Most people would have come across it in school, in films, TV shows, in books, paintings, it's been depicted in all kinds of media for centuries. But what is the Black Death? What did it do? What happened? Over the centuries, the Black Death has been depicted as the ultimate boogeyman in contagious diseases. But what actually happened when they caught it? And how did you catch it? And what were the wider effects that it had on society? Origin of the name, the Black Death. The actual name of the Black Death is the bubonic plague given to it because of the tender, sore, black-coloured swellings that appear on the body, called buboes. These in turn are caused by the bacteria which causes the bubonic plague, Yersinia pestis. In this way, the Black Death is simply the name given to the bubonic plague by popular culture. In the same way that pneumonia was called the White Death and tuberculosis was called consumption. The Black Death or the Plague has become so famous that even if you don't know its full scientific name, its mere mention is enough to conjure up images of horror, a level attained by almost no other disease on earth. Next episode we'll talk more about the Black Death. <laughs>